My name is Jason Lasserre. I'm the Security Practice Manager for MicroAge. And a lot of our clients have had questions regarding what Bitcoin is. With the rise of conversations of ransomware, it's become a key component of those incidents. And today we're going to explain a little bit about what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin was released as open source software in 2009 by Satoshi Nakamoto. It was created in response to the economic crisis that was happening at the time. Nakamoto wanted to create a decentralized currency that was able to be traded peer-to-peer -peer without having to have an intermediary or a banking or government facility involved within the transactions. So a Bitcoin is broken into several units. The base unit of Bitcoin is just one Bitcoin. It's represented as BTC. And then think of it as quarter, nickel, dime, penny type of thing. Uh, there's a uh, milli uh, Bitcoin, micro Bitcoin, and Satoshi. Uh, the main difference is that it's strictly peer-to-peer -peer transactions. I pay you, or an organization pays an organization, or organization pays an individual, that type of thing. There's no uh, bank, there's no financial institution. It's all done through algorithm, and uh, there's a finite amount. So there will only be a certain amount of Bitcoin available ever. Additionally, Bitcoin is a pseudo-anonymous currency. You're able to tie specific transactions to certain numbers, but you can only indirectly infer who those individuals were. And you can also change uh, the uh, payer and the receiver account numbers per transaction. So let's talk a minute about who created Bitcoin, because this is a little bit of a Hollywood story. Satoshi Nakamoto was originally uh, seen on a paper released in 2008. Uh, in 2009, Bitcoin was released. And then in 2011, there was another paper written on the topic. And then from then on, Nakamoto disappears. There's very few references of him before 2008, and there's no word from him since 2011. And the email server that they were using and all communication was completely anonymous and untraceable. So as far as everyone can tell, Nakamoto never existed. There have been people who have come forward saying that they are this person, but there's been very little evidence to tie a real individual to Bitcoin. There's a lot of legitimate reasons for Bitcoin to exist. The technology itself is robust and it's very much forward thinking. In fact, according to sources, most banks are looking to use this technology for future transactions. And they feel that this is really kind of the the ground bed for new technology in banking and mobile payments. Additionally, we're seeing a lot of online retailers accepting Bitcoin for legitimate transactions. Some of these include Microsoft, Overstock.com, Dell, and even Subway for a sandwich. There's a need for this global currency, a currency not tied to any one nation, and a currency that doesn't have its value fluctuate on the economy of a local region, and a way for people to easily exchange goods online. So Bitcoin is often used for cybercrime, uh, specifically ransomware is the popular one right now. It's the unmarked bills of the 21st century. So the reason why people use it for cybercrime is because of privacy, because it's easily used for other online transactions, and there's multiple paths that people can take to earn profit with Bitcoin. What I mean by privacy is that Bitcoin leverages pseudonymization which means it's very hard to tie specific transactions to specific individuals or businesses. You can sometimes infer it indirectly, but there's also ways around that to make it harder and harder to tie these transactions to the people that they belong to. There's this underground economy that leverages Bitcoin to buy other transactions. So it's very easy to take Bitcoins earned from ransomware and use them for other things, such as buying uh, fake credit cards online, or other types of malware for your next heist. And when I mean multiple paths of profit, there's the upfront value that you can get from Bitcoin by just extorting it from your victims. The other way to get Bitcoin is through mining. And this could be by leaving software on the computer that is trying to mine for a blockchain and earn currency through this method. And that's also very profitable and hard to trace back to individuals. So in the end, we've talked about Bitcoin and what it is. And we can understand that Bitcoin by itself is not evil. It's just as evil as unmarked currency was when people were robbing banks. But because of the nature of the technology, 
It lends itself really well to holding people for ransom with ransomware and other extortion type of techniques. So I'm getting a lot of questions from our clients because they've become a victim of ransomware. And they need to understand not only what they need to pay if that's what they decide to do, but also how to protect themselves from ransomware. I and MicroAge try to help our clients understand a security strategy to help protect themselves from ransomware and other attacks, to understand what their environment currently looks like, and also to understand how they can educate their employees so that the people in their organization are their first line of defense. We really want to ensure that this technology is ultimately used for good and isn't perceived as this very negative thing. Because as we've seen, this could be the technology of the future for online transactions.